Hello, and welcome to Game Wolf Plays. I control the horizontal and the vertical. Today is a test of, can you believe you can actually do this in this game? Because this is the first time I've ever witnessed it. And somehow the source port knows how to deal with... The, sor the source port have to write particular rules to deal with glitches only possible in DOS. Ha ha ha! Sucks to be them. They don't know about Lilith.pk3. Mwahaha! Don't actually try that. Unless your eyes can take it, in which case, go ahead! Just warning you now, your eyes are gonna hate it. Okay. Anyway, so, what I'm about to show you is a thing that happens. It's a glitch. If you've already, if you're very into the community, you, are, you know it's coming. You see that? It just walked through the wall. Now, it is essentially a ghost enemy. Okay. What happens is, um, as they're about to die, in this case, under a crusher, an arch file, it, they, the designer times the arch file so it resurrects them just at the moment of impact or death. Which is why they time this stuff. And then, so they're technically getting resurrected, but they're already dying. So somehow that causes them to come about as ghosts. So they, they can no-clip through walls. And they no-clip through anything you shoot at them. But... Bla or splash damage still works on them. So my solution is to use rockets near them. And that's working. Thankfully, this happens very few times. This and one other time. This time it's going to be just these imps. The second time is just going to be like one revenant and it's going to be annoying, but at least it'll be one. But yeah, very interesting. I could see a whole campaign that is just designed around these ghost enemies. I imagine someone's done that, done that exactly. I know there's a campaign about arch file jumping, which is to make the arch file basically boost you into the air by blasting with fire and going up places you couldn't otherwise. It's like technically makes you jump. It's like you bastard. You magnificent bastard. That's technically jumping. You win. Yeah. We may... I don't know why they're doing this kind of crap on the spaceship, however. That's anyone's guess. But yeah, it's, it's freaky. Because in the source ports, they just show them as, you know... You can tell they're intangible because they make them that way. But in, in DOS, you see... They don't seem like that that way, but... When you see them walk through the walls, you... you actually, you know what that reminds me of? There's just one episode of Star Trek Next Generation where, um... Geordi and... What was it? Ensign Rowe, I believe. So, Jordi LaForge and Ensign Rowe. They stumble upon this... This uh, device or whatever. I, I forget. I forget the context of how it was done. But it involves some Romulan bullshit. I do know that. And so... Usually, Romulans use these cloaking devices and stuff, right? And there's like kind of an embargo... On the Federation doing that for reasons. So, whatever. But anyway, they're experimenting with a new phasing technology or whatever. And, um, it basically phases themselves out of reality in a way that makes them look the ghost. So, like, this happens, the George of the Forge and Ezra is like, oh no, we can't find them. But meanwhile, they're just, like, walking through everything and, like, messing with the equipment by, like, touching it. But they're not really touching it, they're just going through it. Now, you'd think that would mean they'd fall out of the spaceship. I'm not sure. Go ask how their gravity stabilizers work and that maybe that would explain it. Considering that they do have to simulate gravity on the ship, that's probably why they're able to stay on said ship with, instead of falling through it. But yeah, they the final Romulan got hit with this too, and so it's falling around and they're thinking it's part of the background. Since the back since you know real life events are, can't interact with them, they're kinda of technically there. And like, there's like, event made for them, them being dead. And they decide in their event, which is just kind of like, well, let's make it a happy event. And so they just do this little like, it's like what you do at like a wedding, except they do it for a funeral. 
So they just have, like, food and music and, you know, think about the good times they had with their friends. Thinking that they're dead, which they're not. Anyway, that just reminded me of that, with these guys walking through the walls the way that they do, they do in a sense in which they think we're dead, but they're not. Not technically ghosts, basically. What a good thing I just remembered. More impressively is how much I can remember from a single episode. I'm not so good at remembering lines, but I'm really great at remembering, like, what I'd call uh, a synopsis. Yeah, I think I could make a synopsis of these things and do all right. But I don't try to make my life about it, but that's because there's just so much to do. With so much to see, so much to do. Unfortunately, if I just restrict myself to video games, I kind of miss the context it has on other mediums, including real life stuff, which means I have to like tap into other media to add context to what I'm doing. I have to prioritize. It's a bitch. Prioritizing people and things in ways that you didn't intend them. Let's have some food. Oh, speaking of, this is Ten Ford. Right here. I killed everyone in Ted Ford, Whoopi Goldberg. Are you proud of me? Why did you keep this yellow key card from me? God damn it, Guinan. Aren't you Guinan, the spirit of Earth? Oh, wait, that's Captain Planet. Fuck! <laughs> The power is mine! Remember that one time in Captain Planet where they actually had an episode that discussed AIDS? I remember it. That was the first time I ever heard about AIDS. Seriously. What a way to learn about that, too. The, the thing is, I don't know if I ever talked to anybody about that after the fact until, like, you know, years later. Because <laughs> what was I going to say? I didn't, like... I was a kid. I didn't know what this meant. <laughs> like, I figure it was disease. Obviously. But, I didn't understand the controversy because of my age. Now it is extremely clear to me! But, wow. Old shit. What do you think? I think Captain Planet needs a reboot. What do you think it'd be like now? That, uh, that's... That's gonna drive Captain Planet insane. Someone experimented with that thing and just become a crazy terrorist. And I'm just like, well, I mean, that is a plot line for a lot of things, so maybe there's a drawing on that. Ego terrorism, the hallmark of any well intentioned extremist, anti villain bad guy. When you want an anti villain, make them save the environment, or be utilitarian, or something like that. Or justice in a pretty badass way, but it's only against those who deserve it kind of way which can flip on its head to be an anti-hero pretty quick. But there's differences. What is ultimately the difference between an anti-villain and anti-hero? That's a good question. I don't know, I just like well-written anti-villains. I think that's why people like Magneto's character, because he's like the best written anti-villain in recent memory. He really is. And I hope that if they're bringing X-Men back to the MCU, we just basically get Magneto being like, yo, I survived the Holocaust, what about it? I don't know, man. There's so many things you can do with X-Men that I want them to do. And since they're recontinuing the animated series, which, well, I, I was, we've been tied on cash, so we didn't have enough, we had to like cut out some streaming services and get, cut, cut out Disney Plus as one of them. I know, she's like, why are you supporting Disney Plus? It's like, dude, most of it is just... Most of it is kind of a holdover for my mother-in-law, because she would just watch a lot of TV towards the end of her life. And so just like, here, have all the streaming services. You can watch as many things as you possibly can. It's quite a plan. You know, if you retire, it's like, all right. It's like, I've only got a few years left. May as well watch everything possible on TV. It's like, well, that's a plan, isn't it? I don't think she was thinking at that time, but at some point she probably realized that. And just like, I may as well just do this now. <laughs> Remember, because I think one of the last good things I saw to watch was the new Dune movie. And you know what? I'm going to make some time for that. I think I will. I think I will. She tends to rewatch. She tends to rewatch a lot of like the action hero stuff. So it's like, and her favorite was always a uh, uh, Van Damme. You know that guy. 
But you know, anything that's like Bruce Willis, Jason Statham, basically anyone who would show up on Expendables. That was their favorite shit. It's like, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> My grandma's like that. It's just like, she's into Bruce Willis. It's like, he said a curse word, but she loves him. It, it, it's funny. Funny stuff. Oh, shame about Bruce Willis, by the way. I'm very sorry to Bruce Willis' family. Because we all thought it was just going to be like, you know, it'd be hard of hearing. But now that he's at the uh, dementia stage. And if you're hearing about Bruce Willis through my YouTube video, I don't know what you're doing wrong, but your head is under a rock. But, I mean, you really shouldn't hear it through me. Hear it through someone else. I'm just mentioning it as a point of... It just kind of sucks to be like... All right. First of all, you can't hear anything, or you're mute, or something. And now you got dementia. It's like, wow, that happened too close together. Like, I'm imagining the next thing, and they're just gonna put him in hospice care. It's like, damn it, dude, just hang on. We're already like bowling over the last two news. So, not that I want to keep discussing celebrity deaths, but that's like, it's like a once in a while celebrity thing where it's just like. Oh no, he's just like, it's just getting worse and worse. He's, he's decaying. Pay respects to Captain Bellows. He's expecting you. Oh, oh, what a darling. This Captain Bellows. Pro tip, look at the next title to find out what Captain Bellows even is. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha. Oh, by the way, this level had no secrets before you complain at me. I'll double check that. 